My name is Jamie and I am here at Laconia Public Library for Family Craft Time. Today we are making, I think, a really fun project because I love flamingos. <laughs> Today we are making these paint scraped flamingos. So it's a flamingo, but we're going to paint it using kind of an interesting technique. So I chose flamingos for two reasons. One, because Valentine's Day is this weekend, Saturday, Sunday, sometime this weekend, and I always think pink when I think of Valentine's Day, and flamingos are pink. The other reason I chose flamingos was because I love flamingos, and they make me think of nice warm weather, and right now I think I need to think of nice warm weather as I'm looking out the window and it's snowing again. <laughs> so I feel like it's been snowing every other day for the last week or so. So I thought we needed a nice tropical bird to get us into kind of a warmer mood. So let's get started. First I'm going to show you what was in the kits. If you picked up a kit, you should have these things in there. Hopefully you have all of these things. So first there should be some paint. I gave you pink, white, and red paint. And then you should have an instruction sheet that looks like this so that you can do this project without having to watch me on this video if you don't want to watch the video. You also have a cutout or a little picture of a flamingo. So this is what we're going to be painting and cutting out. And then we have a couple of different colors of paper and you can use these to make a nice scene for your flamingo. So I'm going to put my flamingo on this blue paper. If you have other colors of paper at home and you want to decorate your scene, that's really cool too. So there are a few other things that you need for this project that I didn't include in your bags. I think probably most of you have these things at home. So you're going to need a pair of scissors, a glue stick, a black marker, and some newspaper is really great for putting underneath your paper as you're working on it because if you're anything like me, you're very messy. <laughs> I'm very messy. I'm not ashamed to admit it. And then I also got a little plastic knife. You could use a paintbrush. You don't really need this or a paintbrush, um, but I just thought it might be easier. I think the pink paint in particular is um, pretty gloopy. It's not as runny as the other two colors, so that knife might come in handy just for getting it out of the container. So that's all the stuff we need for this project. So I'm ready to get started. Are you guys ready to get started? All right, I'm gonna lay out everything in front of me that I'm gonna need to start with. So I'm gonna put my newspaper down and then I'm gonna put this paper down and I'm gonna get my paint ready. So I'm gonna open up all three containers. We're gonna be dripping all of this paint onto our paper. So I'll show you what's going on down here in just a second so you can see a little bit better. Just have to arrange everything first. All right, so I'm just opening up all of my paint. I think this is such a fun project. I hope you guys like it. All right, so because flamingos are mostly pink, I'm going to start with my pink paint. So my flamingo is probably upside down for you. I can't tell. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's my flamingo. I'm going to start by seeing if I can drip any of this paint out. Now I really can't because it's, it is gloopy. So I'm gonna grab just this, this um, plastic knife. You could use a plastic spoon or a paintbrush that you might have at home. I'm just gonna dip some of it out and I'm just kinda gonna dab it all over my flamingo. It's okay if it goes off of your flamingo. It's okay if it goes on the white paper around the flamingo, not a problem. And I'm just making some little blobs just like this. Just want to make sure I have enough that there will it will cover my whole flamingo. And it's okay if there's some extra. We're going to be scraping it off with that cardboard. So there we go. I don't know if you can see, but it's the paint is not flat. It's kind of glopped on there. And that's just how we want it. So next, I am going to use my red paint. And I could use my knife again. I could also just do a little drip because the red paint is a little bit runnier. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to have to tap it a few times here, a little bit of red paint here, a little bit of red paint here, and you're going to see the colors as they mix. Red kind of stands out more than pink, so it just depends on which color you want on your flamingo 
or which color you want more of on your flamingo. All right, so there's our red, and then I'm gonna do a little bit of white too. So I'm gonna, I don't wanna, you know, pour this on, I just kinda wanna dip it a little bit. So we're just gonna dip here and there. And this is probably more than enough paint but that's okay. I'm not gonna bother with the legs because we're actually gonna cut other legs out, but if you would prefer to put the paint on the legs and do things that way, that's fine too. You can, maybe I will, I'll do that for this one so you can see. And then you can cut the legs out too if that's how you wanna do it. So I'm just gonna dip some paint here. Maybe we'll do a tiny little bit of red too. There we go. All right, definitely don't need a lot on the legs because they're so skinny. All right, so here's our flamingo. The next thing we're gonna do, that part didn't take very long, did it? The next thing, I'm, I'm just covering up my paint because I am really good at getting paint on myself. So <laughs> I'm just covering it up so that doesn't happen. All right, so our next step is to grab that little piece of cardboard so you should have a piece of cardboard in your bag, and if you don't, you should be able to find one at home somewhere. You can also use like a business card or something like that. This is basically what this is. So then we're gonna start scraping. So you can start anywhere, and you just wanna kinda scrape your card all over your flamingo. Can you see already how the paint colors are just kind of mixing and becoming red and white and pink all mixed together? Doesn't that look cool? I think that's so much fun. So you're probably gonna have way too much paint on there. At least I have too much paint on mine, but that's okay. I can always scrape it off and then I can throw my little piece of cardboard away. But I wanna make sure to cover the whole flamingo. All right, do you guys have your flamingos colored or covered? Here's what I wanna know. How many of you know why flamingos are pink? How did they get their pink color? Do you know? I'm gonna tell you in a little bit if you don't, but if you know, leave me a comment over there on the side where it says comments, or maybe it's below this video. I'm not really sure what you guys can see. So there's my flamingo. You can see a lot of the red paint just kind of went away, didn't it? You can't even really see it. So my flamingo is mostly pink and white. And I kind of want to add a little bit more red to it. So I'm just going to drip a little more red in here, just a little bit. And then I can kind of scrape that in. Just add a little bit more color. All right, now our flamingo's covered. Our flamingo's legs are covered. And do you see, kind of can see, but probably not so well yet because it's gonna take a little bit to dry. But I'm gonna throw this card away so that I don't get paint everywhere because we're done, pretty much done with the painting part. I know we are done with the painting part. So throw that card away. And then we have to let this guy dry for a little while. So it's gonna take some time for this to dry I am gonna read a quick story. If you'd like to stick around and read a story, then um, we'll read a story about a flamingo. And then hopefully this will be a little bit drier when we're done, and I'll show you what to do for the rest of the project. So, put this over to the side. And we are going to read a story. Oops, covering up my last paint because I forgot. <laughs> All right, I have this fun story here and it's called Sylvie. Tail feathers, they are striped just like her lollipop. So I have to show you guys at the beginning of this book, I forgot to show you before, but do you see the pink colors in the beginning of this book? They look just like what we're doing with our flamingos right now. That's so cool. All right, I think that was such a fun book, and I love the color pink. I love that Sylvie decided to go back and look like the rest of her family. All right, so how's my drying going? Well, it's not drying super fast, but that's okay. Here's what it looks like so far. You can see the little 
white specks in there. I don't know if you can see the red, but there's some red in there too. But I had a feeling it was gonna take a while for this to dry. So a couple of days ago, I made one so that I could show you how to finish out the rest of this project. So here's my flamingo that I painted a few days ago. I didn't paint the legs, so I'll show you how we can make another set of legs. And so I am gonna start by just cutting out my flamingo. So if you did the paint light enough, you can still see the lines of the flamingo very faintly kind of under the paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out just my flamingo's body. Let's see. This is kind of a different way to paint. Have you guys ever painted like this before? I thought it was really fun. This was my first time doing this too. Well, I did it at home so <laughs> the other day so I could do a, a flamingo. What would you name your flamingo? Sylvie was a great name for a flamingo. I don't know. I'd have to really think about what I would name a flamingo. So before I forget, if you do this project at home and you want to send us a picture, we would love to see a picture of your finished flamingo project. You can send it in our email, which is info at laconialibrary.org, or you could send it to us right here on Facebook. We ha you can just send it in the messenger part of Facebook. We love to see pictures of finished projects. We think it's so cool. All right, so I have my flamingo all cut out. Just my flamingo's body. So here's my flamingo. And then I want to make um, a black beak and a little black eye. So I'm actually just going to put this on the table so you can see it. But I'm going to grab my black marker right here. And I'm just going to make a little line right across here. And I'm just going to color in a beak for my flamingo. And I'm putting it on the paper. Oops, you can't see that, can you? I'm putting it on the paper that we just painted because I don't want to get any marker on the table. There we go. There's the beak all colored in. And then we can draw a little eye right here. There you go. If you don't have a black marker at home, a black pen would work too. You just have to color a little bit longer with it. Okay, so our flamingo is all ready to be glued down. So I am going to grab my colored paper here. I would like to make a little bit of a beachy scene for my flamingo. So I'm just gonna put down some sand. So my flamingo is gonna live on a little island, I think. So we'll do a little bit of green for some grass. And we'll just cut out a little, a little wavy line like this make it a little bit of a hill there's a little wavy line so we can glue that down let me move my camera down so you can see so i'm going to glue that this is the bottom of my paper right here so i'm going to grab my glue stick and we're just gonna glue the bottom of this oops it fell and then we're going to glue it right on to the bottom of our blue paper. I like to think that this is the sky, but you could make a scene in any color you wanted. So then I'm just going to cut a little wavy piece of tan paper because I think that looks like a nice sandy beach. And then I'm going to put it kind of oops, on top of my green here. You could put it underneath your green too. You could do this whatever way you want. You don't need to put down any colors if you want. If you don't want to, you can make your flamingo flying in the sky if you want. So I'm just going to do a little tan strip there. Then I'm going to figure out where on my paper I want my flamingo to be because I still need to make legs. So to make legs, I gave you some pink paper, but you could also just color some white paper pink. And I think I'm going to want my legs to be not super long. So. I'm going to cut off a piece of paper like this and then I'm going to start by making just one skinny little strip here. See that? Just one skinny little strip of pink. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm going to figure out how long that is. 
and I'm gonna cut another one, but I'm gonna cut this one kind of on an angle. So we have one leg that's kind of straight and one leg that's on an angle. Show you when I got these all cut out. And you can make two straight legs. So I've got two legs just like this. So then we're gonna glue those on the paper. Let me see if they're too tall. I think they're a little bit too tall. So we're gonna cut off just a little bit here. Oh, and a little bit on this one. Okay, so then we've got two legs. So we're gonna glue those down first and you can glue them anywhere. Oops, probably need the glue open. You can glue them anywhere you want on your paper. I'm gonna glue it right in the middle, just like this. So my flamingo is standing on top of the sand. And then, then we can glue our flamingo on top of the legs. All right, there are our legs all glued down. And then here's our flamingo. So we are going to glue the back of our flamingo. Hmm. You know what, I think I glued the wrong side here. Let's do this. Yeah, that looks better. That's the nice thing about glue. You can, this glue especially, you can unstick it quickly and move it back. There we go, that looks like a better, better way for my flamingo to stand. Okay, so now we're just gonna glue the back of our flamingo with the glue stick. Oops. All right, and then, you know this is a little upside down for you guys, isn't it? There we go, that's better. Then we're just gonna glue our flamingo right on top of the legs. And there we go. What do you think? Such a fun project, right? So if you want, you could also maybe draw a palm tree in the background here. You could make a sun. You could maybe put some little birds flying in the background. You could do all kinds of fun things with this little flamingo scene. But I just think the flamingo and the colors in the flamingo, they're just so fun, so much fun. So I know that it's probably gonna take your flamingo a little bit longer to dry, so you might not be able to finish this project up right this second. You might have to wait till a little bit later tonight too cut it out and get it stuck onto your paper, but that's okay. It's kind of a long project this time, isn't it? So there's our flamingo all done on a nice little beachy scene, ready to enjoy some nice warm weather. It's not snowing where this flamingo is, but that's all right. <laughs> Soon it won't be snowing here either. So before we go, I just wanna show you one other book here that we have here at the library, here it is. And it is such a beautiful book. So I want to just highly recommend this one to you guys because I think it's so cool. It's called The Big Book of Birds. And you can see right on the front there, there's a flamingo. And it has the coolest section on flamingos. I'm gonna show it to you, but you should definitely check this one out because it has so many cool pages about different birds. The one right before the flamingos is about great gray owls. And there are a few facts about each bird um, on the two page spread. So this one is about flamingos. So I'm gonna read these little facts to you. Why is a flamingo pink? A flamingo's favorite food is shrimp and algae. The color inside the food turns the flamingo's feathers pink and red. How oh, cool. What else? Mud soup. A flamingo stirs up mud at the bottom of lakes. It filters the muddy water through its sieve-like beak and eats the tasty scraps of food it finds. It's got like a little sifter right in its mouth and sifts out the muddy stuff because they don't want to eat mud. And then it just eats the good stuff. That's pretty cool. Let's see, what else have we got here? One-legged wonder. A flamingo likes to sleep standing up or standing on one leg. No one knows why. Isn't that interesting? I wonder why they do that. Strange but cool. Oh my goodness. 
When a flamingo gets too hot, it pees on its own legs to cool itself down. I guess whatever works, but don't do that. <laughs> and the last fact on here says dance troupe. A flamingo will try to impress a mate by performing a noisy and flamboyant dance routine with up to 50 friends. That's so cool. It's like a flash mob of, of flamingos. A flamingo flash mob. Anyway, I highly recommend this book if you want to check it out. It's a pretty good sized book. See how big it is? And it's got all kinds of different birds. Oh, there's a bird called a secretary bird. I didn't know that. But all a bunch of little facts about all these birds. Puffins. We have puffins nearby in Maine. And albatrosses. Just such a cool book. Anyway, that's it for our project today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you to all of you who picked up kits here at the library. We love putting these kits together for you, and we love it when you take them and do the kit, the uh, craft at home. So, so thank you for doing this craft. Even if you didn't watch this video and do it at the same time that I did it, that's fine. We just want you to have fun doing some crafts. And if you ever want any of these books from the library, you know you can give us a call or send an email and we will put them aside or put them outside or just have them on our hold shelf for you and you can come in and get them. So we have two more pro uh, programs this week. We have story time tomorrow at 10 o'clock and I will be doing story time tomorrow and we will be reading Valentine's Day and love themed stories. And Gail will be doing story time on Thursday at 10 o'clock and she will also be doing some love and Valentine's Day stories. So we're excited. We love Valentine's week. <laughs> so we hope to see you for one or both of those. And um, next month we'll have a couple more fun crafts coming up. So we will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.